Hello, and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 127, Generational Outlier, recorded on December 30th, 2020 from Zenata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the show. Yes, yeah, so we'll start with some announcements and events. We are going to kick off the new year uh, with a full slate of webinars. We've actually marked them all out. We've planned every one we're going to do, so we'll get all those posted up quickly. But our January webinar, we're going to revisit uh, Zoho One. Uh, we did this webinar last year in January, and quite frankly, there were some audio issues, and it was the first webinar we'd done. And so it was, while well, okay, not great. And then there's been a lot of changes to Zoho One over the last year, and just a lot of things we thought we'd want to talk about. So we're going to hold, do a nice Truly an overview. Uh, we fit this in in an hour last year. I felt it was a miracle to get through 45 apps in an hour. <laughs> that's really basically only a minute or so in application. Uh, but that's going to be January 19th. Uh, I think that's a Tuesday or it's Tuesday or Wednesday at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And also, if you head over to crmzen.com and you click on events, um, there are several events coming up this week. Uh, you've got uh, on January 12th, well, not this week, but kind of the week after, uh, you've got some things. So January 12th, the Los Angeles Zoho user group is going to have a virtual meetup on CRM basics, as is the San Diego and the Irvine user group. And that's going to be the 12th, the 13th, and the 14th. It uh, looks like it's about an hour and a half presentation that's going to be done. And that looks pretty good. So if you head over there, you've got the links, you can go ahead and um, check them out out. And I imagine the events will start to pick up a little more, Tyler, as uh, you know, the new year starts to kick in. It's been, most people really don't hold a lot of events and or webinars and things like that first few weeks in January or the end of December anyway, but not us. We keep going. <laughs> yeah, the train never stops here at uh, the CRM Zen show. Uh, no, that is no, for no. sure. It's our commitment. All or right. obsession. <laughs> it's one of the two. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's head into the news. So we're going to start off with an update to Zoho CRM campaigns integration. This is a little different. I was kind of a bit excited about this. What this lets you do is normally if you want to send a campaign, you have to actually log into Zoho campaigns. And if you're synchronizing it with the CRM, you can set up your custom view, you can set up your synchronization, you can make it an immediate sync or a time sync, and you kind of get all of those things set up. And then you basically, once that's done, you basically do everything out of Zoho campaigns. You go in and create your campaign, choose your list, which is usually sync, doesn't have to be, but usually sync from the CRM if you're doing that. Um, and then you basically submit it for approval and then the campaign gets sent out. Well, now you can do that inside of the uh, CRM. So basically, if you go into campaigns in the CRM, you can now say that you want to set up a Zoho campaign campaign. <laughs> and mm -hmm. It basically will let you choose that. And then it kind of gives you a little widget, you know, choose your template. Now, this gets a little weird. When you say to choose your template, um, you get a couple choices, but if you're going to choose a template in the, that's already created, it does, it is going to take you over to campaigns to choose that. Once you choose it or create it, it'll take you back to the CRM where you can then add recipients and associate a list and do all that kind of stuff. Um, it's kind of cool. I think this is like maybe a first step to, Hey, I really want to send a campaign out of campaigns. But what I was hoping this would do is it would allow me to choose from like a CRM template. Right. And send so it via I, campaigns and just send the whole thing via campaigns. Cause you know, you buck up against like only send a thousand out. I could do this and that would have been kind of nice. But as I played around with this, it since it, when you go to choose, you, you end up in campaigns anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's not like that's a bad interface, it's a really good interface. So I felt like, you know, might've want to send it out of there, but it does kind of give you some, you know, Gives you some interesting ways of doing it, I guess. I think, I think yeah, I think one of the nice stuff. things with this is um, it's easier when you're choosing your recipients from the CRM yes. to do it via this view, right? Where previously you would have had to go in and, and not that this is too tricky to do, but you know, you'd have to actually go into campaigns and set up a sync and authenticate the connection and then 
use the campaigns interface to pull a CRM view and you know map it to your list. And there's basically a way to do those same steps, but inside of the CRM user interface. So it might feel a little bit more natural. I think, well, you, I mean, for, for sending out those one shot emails like this, I think it is a, a pretty elegant way to do it. Um, it doesn't look like this is running for, you know, your workflow emails or kind of longer term drips or autoresponders. But, you know, if you've got a newsletter list and it's all in the CRM, this seems like a, a pretty sweet way to do it. Yeah, I, that is one benefit. One of the things I did notice is when you do go to the ad recipients, you basically are set with all your custom views. So you could just choose a custom view that you've never synced before. Or you could just choose five or six people randomly that you've never seen before and have it go out to them. So uh, I think you're right. Um, that is a, a a pretty good benefit at the end of the day. All right. And then um, this is big, big, big news. This actually came out um, a week ago and we'd already done our show on Tuesday when we did the big Zen Me Awards. But for those of you that uh, are not familiar with it, uh, Zoho is now introducing the Canvas Design Studio. So what this is, if, if you're a CRM user now, you may know that when you're looking at a list of records, you can view them as either, you know, just standard rows in a Kanban view or in a Canvas view where you're able to do a little bit more customization in terms of, you know, how that, how that list actually looks. And what they're doing with Canvas view here is you're actually able to customize the record view. So if you're looking at one specific contact or account, you're able to get really granular and design out the look, feel, color coding, and layout of that record. Um, I mean, if you're watching us on uh, on YouTube, you'll see we've got a little video playing, and you can really go crazy with this. I mean, we we've all spent a little bit of time playing around with it since we got uh, early access maybe a couple of weeks ago, and I mean, it is easy to use. You're able to do a ton of customization of the record. Uh, one of the things we really love about it is that you're able to custom format your related lists. So one of the big challenges right now is, you know, if you're looking at, let's say, a specific deal and you have some products that you're going to sell in that deal, currently the only place those products can live is basically as a list. And it's going to be at least halfway down the page because it has to be below the record information. And with Canvas View, I mean, you're able to take your related list, put them at the top of the screen, put them as a tab that runs across the top. I mean, again, if you're looking at this on YouTube and if you've never checked us out on YouTube, this would be a good one to see so you can see some of these images. I mean, you can really go crazy with this. Um, this is one that we've been waiting for for a while um, since they announced it at, I think it was the 2019 Zoholics conference. Yeah, April and 2019. They've taken their time and and I think it was worth it because they've really gotten it right. I mean, it's it's super slick what they've done here. All I want to say is it's just beautiful. I, I mean, again, you know, if you don't watch the YouTube, just go check out the newsletter, go to the link, go to the Zoho community and search on this. This, like you said, Tyler, we have been waiting for this and waiting for this. And we actually got early access to this a while ago. I think one of the crazy things about this is that over the last four or five months, we've been on several kind of internal Zoho webinars where we're actually seeing some of this stuff. <laughs> it's been like, come on, let's have it. But I mean, the design elements, the ability to customize, you know, uh, this little swoop and the way it all ties together, man, this really changes things. It takes it to the it takes it to the next level. There's a lot of things we haven't dug into yet uh, around this. You know, there's a, if you're looking at the, if you, again, watch this on YouTube, we've got a, a screen up where it's kind of a real estate one and it's got a box of amenities. We're assuming this is a related list being pulled in, but I'm not certain, right? And so it says like, it's got a lift and a gym and fire safety. And each one of these has a small little icon associated with it. Um, I mean, this is kind of, other level stuff right here, right? So yeah, this is not something that you can do in really any other CRM like this. And, and you know, some of them might allow you to layer on, you know, a front end or something like that, but this is just all within a little, you know, graphical interface to build this out, no code necessary. I mean, even me, I'm the furthest thing from a designer, but it wasn't hard for me to put together a basic view, make sure everything looks clean. Um, you know, I think one of the, one of the most common um, you know, critiques that we hear from our clients about the Zoho CRM is just the visual aspect of it. That at the end of the day, a lot of these records, when you pull them up, they kind of just look like a form. 
you know, it doesn't really look like a page, you know, with elegantly presented information. And I think Zoho heard that critique and, and did a great job working on it. And a, one of the things with it right now is that when you're looking at a canvas view currently, if you do happen to sneak into early access, currently those canvas views aren't editable when you're looking at them, you'd have to pull up the edit page. But I know that Zoho is working on that as well. And that'll be released um, shortly following the release of uh, canvas view. I mean, it's, again, take a look at this. If this is the only piece that you check out in the newsletter, it'd be a good one to see. I mean, it's, uh, it's absolutely great what they've done. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, by the way, like this one screen we're looking at right now is uh, for a real estate company that they've, and this gives me some ideas. Number one, there's this absolutely beautiful mansion on the screen that, that uh, is selling for uh, $85,000. <laughs> so I, I want that. Um, uh, anyway, this the picture doesn't match the uh, the thing because it's only got a uh, 1,350 square feet. So I guess that, I think that's the foyer. Uh, but the part about this is, is if I look at this, um, I'd want to share this page publicly. I mean, if you think about this, this is done for properties and there's a lot of other things you'd want to do this where, okay, here's our inventory. We've got this in. I mean, if you shared this page publicly to a website, I mean, this is everything they'd want to know about the site. So that would be an interesting thing to say, you know, because you have share internally, but to actually say, I'm going to share this specific record in this specific canvas view. And I want, here's my shareable public link. And then mm -hmm. you can embed that in any website you wanted. Um, then this becomes your whole back end for managing that kind of stuff. You mm -hmm. know, it's uh, pretty, pretty interesting. We'll add that to our 2021 wish list, 2022 <laughs> yes, wish list. <laughs> uh, if you can't tell, we're pretty excited about this update. <laughs> yeah, uh, It's been really, one that we've been, you know, readily waiting for here for a while. Really good but Kudos stuff. to you, Zoho. You did a great job. And then uh, Tyler, you've got uh, a dark mode now in Zoho Sheet. So yeah, it's just kind of a little minor update. It seems like they're rolling this out across various Zoho apps week over week. It's getting this added and uh, Sheets is now no different. So it looks like it's basically adding dark mode for the user interface, like around the actual spreadsheet, yeah. as well as your spreadsheet or chart elements. Pretty slick. It's very you can get very modular and granular with what uh, what you want to do there. All right, and then moving on with Zoho news, we've got a brand new UI rolling out to uh, Zoho Recruit, um, and there's actually a lot going on with Zoho Recruit. So uh, this is all around the job openings and the candidates page. Just some really nice tweaks, kind of in line with what we're starting to see in the CRM. And I know you noticed some other things in Zoho Recruit you were pretty excited about as well. Yeah, so these, I mean, these changes here, like you're mentioning, it's similar to the changes they made a couple months back to the CRM. I mean, it's similar teams, kind of similar applications, so it's uh, no surprise there. One thing I will highlight about this update is the hiring pipeline. They've redone the UI when you're looking at a specific candidate and all the movements they've made through a pipeline. It's basically like your timeline information, and they've improved that significantly. So you're able to basically color code and see when anything happened, you know, along that candidate's journey. Then they also did put out uh, kind of quietly an improved search bar inside of Recruit. Uh, so rather than having just the little monocle that pulls out, you know, a, a five centimeter wide search bar that just searches across every single module, what they've done is when you click that search button, basically pulls up, you know, a wide search bar. You're able to search within specific modules. Um, as you start to search, the suggested responses are formatted a lot better. So you can actually kind of see them more than when you're searching in like the little search bar that's currently still in the CRM. So I'd love to see that search bar copied and pasted right into the CRM, which I would assume they're going to do again, similar teams, similar applications. So we'll be on the lookout for that. But, uh, yeah, across the board, good updates to Zoho recruit. You know, I've been waiting for one. Uh, that really talks about all the things that have been done to CRM. It doesn't seem like a week or almost a day goes by that they're not rolling out little tiny tweaks. I mean, we used to do a thing on the show called Things We Noticed. Um, maybe we should bring it back because there's a lot to notice lately on all of the apps. I mean, in CRM, all settings page has been completely reformatted. But 
the way, you know, you used to have kind of the little, you know, upside down Chevron that would kind of for drop down. Now that's kind of a nice little more button. And every single thing has been changed. If you go to send an email now, uh, they've changed the entire format in so much better. Sending. Oh, it's way better in the templates yeah. and your ability to choose. And I mean, everything they're doing is just off the charts um, with these changes they've been making. And uh, you know, it's great. I mean, starting the new year with just, it's, it's, it, it's not dated looking at all anymore. So no, and they've also those updates to the list view where it's automatically locking the leftmost column. So if you yeah. have like your deal name and let's say you have a, handful of parameters that you have in that list view. If you scroll right, the deal name stays locked like you might do in a spreadsheet. I mean, it's just little update for them to make on their end, but just hugely impactful if you are kind of using the CRM in that rows and columns format in any of the different modules. Yeah. One thing I noticed, so I don't know if you, maybe I get this wrong, but um, if you're in a custom view right now, I don't think you can dynamically add columns anymore. I think you actually have to go in and edit the custom view. It used to be you had that little box where you could just click and say, I want to see these columns. Have you noticed that went away? I haven't noticed that. I don't know. Makes take me a curious look. though. I almost want to check now. Uh, yeah. Take, <laughs> take a quick look. Um, well, I, well, we, we can't do that Tyler because you've got to uh, talk about your, these three major Zoho, these three creator updates that kind of came out to close out the year. Yes, yeah, so we've got a couple updates here from Zoho Creator. A lot of them are um, basically around permissions. So, you know, one of the things that you're able to do now is uh, when you're creating a, um, a relationship between records or, you know, a specific function that's touching on, um, you know, different apps or different locations of data, what it'll do is allow you to list apps only including those where a specific user has permissions. Um, so if you're building something out that you know is for a sales user, then you're not gonna connect that record to anything that they wouldn't have access to see. Um, you're also able to set up permissions around form integrations. Um, again, some of these, I mean, these aren't bad updates. Generally, you're gonna have that admin and everything's gonna run through them when it comes to doing any integrations, but you are able to set those up you know, a little bit more specifically. And then lastly, kind of a, just a little minor update around fonts, right? So a couple of fonts that weren't supported previously or that were supported previously, pardon me, are not gonna be supported anymore um, following December 31st. Uh, seems like they've kind of chosen replacements for each of the fonts that are gonna be going away. And um, if you click through the link in the newsletter, they've got a list of all of those different fonts that are gonna be deprecated as well as the ones that are going to replace them. There's kind of a couple minor little updates here for uh, creator. All right. Well, Hey, I solved, uh, I figured it out, Tyler, while you were doing that. So here's what they've done. If you're in a custom view, um, you now have a filter and then you can edit the custom view. But if you go all the way over to the right in the header row, you've got a, what look like a couple sliders. And if you click on those sliders, you have a choice to clip some text or manage the columns. So it's, it's a two click thing now. And you can do um, column sizing. Can you? You can, yeah, it's got you manage columns, yeah. reset column size, and you have wrap text as well. Very nice. So I'm not seeing that. You're so not seeing I'm, that under the three, under the little. Uh, but reset column size is not uh, highlighted for me, which is interesting. Oh, yeah. Mine's version. not anymore. Oh, actually, I'm just saying, I wonder if you can just highlight it. Oh, you can just slide them yourself. Look at that. So reset means reset because you basically can create, you can move them around to your own size. So this is exciting, especially for those listening to the show. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Zoho Assist is now integrated into Zoho Bookings. This is pretty cool. So if, yeah, Zoho Bookings, if you're unfamiliar with it, is Zoho's application that allows people to go ahead and book a meeting with you. And it's getting better. As a matter of fact, Tyler, I did a little more of a test on it this week and it, it, it doesn't have Zoom integration yet, but man, I think the rest of the part's good. The meetings now seem to be lining up. So gotcha. that's, a, that's a really good thing. But with this update, uh, what this does is it allows you to also add a Zoho Assist 
link into the meetings that you're doing. And if you're unfamiliar with Zoho Assist, it basically allows you to take over someone's computer, have a little chat session, the entire thing. So, you know, if you're someone's booking a meeting for you to fix something or review something, you can, this is a super, super nice feature. Nice integration, I think. Yeah, and Zoho Assist, if you've ever... Um ever chatted Zoho for support or anything like that. And they've had you download the link, right? That's, that's what that application is. And I mean, this one's super nice. If you're in like the IT space and you're helping people out with this, I mean, click to book and then you've just already got your assist link added and invite sent. I mean, it's a super slick workflow. sounds like the last thing we're waiting for, for a uh, migration ourselves over to bookings is either, you know, resolving some of the issues with meetings or getting that zoom and integration going. Because other yeah. than that, I mean, the, a lot of the tools under the hood with bookings are pretty slick, right? I mean, being able to make the teams really easily doing the individual bookings. I mean, it's a it's a solid tool just with a couple little issues. It seems like they're getting uh, resolved. It really is. And we've been looking at this now for, again, I think when we got the full, full, full rollout demo, would have that have been October of last year? Wasn't it? it developers? So. I mean, they, they, w- caught, they rolled it out before that, but I think like the 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 developer mm-hmm. beta we got back uh, October yeah. 2019. The Interesting too that the entire app is uh, built in Creator. The whole bookings is actually a just really well polished uh, Creator instance. Yeah, it looks good. They've done a good job. It looks like it's getting there. You know, that's I'm really there. I'm going to be so excited when bookings and meeting come off the no list and up to the yes list because I don't think they're going to sit in the maybe. I think they're going to go straight to the top. Yeah, right. once those little things are resolved, and they're, <laughs> they're, they're great. They're, they're going to rock it right to the top. It's going to be uh, going to be good. All right, and in mobile news, wow, kind of had a whole bunch of uh, mobile updates that rolled out this week. So in Zoho Desk, um, electronically protected health information, HIPAA kind of stuff, is now supported in the Zoho Desk app for Android and iOS. S. Um, so you basically can en- enable EPHI and then that information will uh, be handled in a way that is HIPAA compliant, which I think is the health insurance portability. Health information e- portability. Accessibility act. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Yes. Anyway. So your medical records are now, uh, you know, protected. You can do that by actually having an EPHI field, which is uh, pretty cool, I think. Yeah, super slick. And now, basically, if you define something as one of those fields in the um, the web application, then you are able to see that in the mobile app. So it gets a little tag applied to it that identifies that it's uh, personally identifiable info. Yeah. And then also in the Zoho Desk app, widgets are now supported in the Android app. So for those of you that use Android, you've had widgets forever. The iOS world just recently got them. (laughs) Uh, This is something you put on your desktop. So you can now easily put, you know, how many open tickets, how many on hold, how many overdue. Um, Some really nice widgets, I think. You know, this is slick. Yeah. And I mean, kind of seeing this across the board, right? I think uh, as Zoho is such an Apple house themselves that, you know, I think once they were released on Apple, right, and on iOS, then it yeah. spurred them to want to build more widgets. And now they're kind of getting the rollover into Android as well. You know, and I tell you what, I I think because I've been on iOS since the very, very first iPhone came out, I don't get widgets, man. I put them on my screen. I'm like, yeah, you're taking up space. I'd rather have <laughs> icons there. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I've never, yeah, I I don't do much on my phone at all. I'm the one outlier, I think, in my generation that doesn't prefer to use the phone for anything. And I remember when I used to work um, in another uh, company that was using Zoho as an electric bike company. And when I would go and do inventory or apply any SKUs to the bikes, I'd rather bring my laptop around and just do it that way rather than use the phone. But it's one of those old habits, die hard thing. I've always been glued to one. So it's... uh Hard for me to change and use mobile, even even with widgets. Well, you are an outlier in your generation, Tyler, as you say. You know, <laughs> you're an old soul, I guess. Yeah, I can't yeah. do it either. I mean, I you know, we're going to talk about something here in a minute, but you can, you know, it, it's like the ability to, hey, let me create a PowerPoint presentation on my phone. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, no I, I don't want to create a PowerPoint presentation. I don't get it. You know, it seems, uh, it seems too difficult. Anyway, and moving on the very, very last Zoho Desk update is you now have the archive view is now enhanced with Desk for the iOS app. I guess this is allowing you to see tickets that have been archived. Yeah, and it makes it a little more clear when they're archived. It applies a little tag to it. Just kind of some minor updates, so it's easier to see on the uh, iOS app. So not really uh, too terrible. Nothing crazy. No. All righty. And then uh, lastly, the CRM mobile app got a couple updates as well. Big, big one. Uh, CRM for iOS app now supported your iMap accounts. (laughs) Woohoo! <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> it's pretty big. Uh, I, I I think it's just mean if if it means what I think it means. Um, their their screenshots are clearly gone bad here on the, <laughs> on the video. <laughs> but I think is this mean? I haven't tried this. Does this mean we're pulling in? Um, you can see the emails inside the record now. Yeah, exactly. So you know when you're looking at um, the CRM, it's. You know, one thing that you'll oftentimes do is if you've got Outlook, you've got Gmail, right? You're going to set up a quick little IMAP integration, which basically will sync any emails that are to contacts or leads in the CRM, you know, from Gmail or from Outlook so that you're able to see them and send out emails properly, um, you know, via the CRM itself. And it looks like here, basically what they're doing is also supporting that integration for, you know, visibility and usage through the app, which is great. I mean... This is one, again, speaking about though we don't use the phones a lot. I do know many of our clients, you know, for their sales reps are heavy users on the phone, right? If they're driving from location to location or, you know, kind of just working, working however they do it, they just prefer the phone. So this is a great update to kind of allow more continuity, right? That the same, you're using the same exact type of email configuration, whether you're, you know, at your desk or you know, on the road. Yeah. So I basically just pulled it up on my phone. It is slick. So it used to be, if you're in a contact, you could have, you know, all the related lists associated with it in the details. Now there's a middle tab called emails. Not only does it give you all of the emails to and from, but if you click on the email, it brings up the full email and you have the ability to reply forward, reply all um, directly from within the mobile app. That's pretty slick. It's really cool. That's actually a big update. You know, more and more, I mean, we also saw this year, you know, sub forms made it to the, the mobile apps. That was kind of big because they were mm-hmm. missing for the longest time. Um, and I, you're right. There are people that absolutely just live inside the mobile app across the board. Yep. Uh, and you also now have the ability, um, this is on the Android app for people to um, set their time zones. And, uh, um, which is, is kind of nice. So, uh, if you, it used to be individually, a sales rep could not set a time zone where they were. Now they actually can set their preferred time zone, which is uh, pretty important. And I'm tr- this is crazy. So if you're watching us on the YouTube channel, we're bringing up the articles and all of the screenshots have been replaced with kind of new updates are available. I am just dying to know how this could have happened across all of these. I think they did it on purpose. It looks like they're highlighting their new update methodology, right? We brought in support for in-app updates, leveraging the app ticks library. Ah, So not showing about the new. (laughs) I see. So they're not showing screenshots for what the title of the article is about. They're just so talking about the update ability. All right, cool. But that doesn't work on iOS. I don't think it's an Android thing, I guess. Right. I believe so. I'm not 100% sure. Well, we should be sure about these things. <laughs> All right. And that brings us to our implementation of the week. Yeah. So this was one that we built out for Zoho Recruit to automate some candidate scoring. Um, so if you've used Zoho Recruit before, you'll know that it has a pretty robust scoring uh, functionality. But really, a lot of the scoring is based on assessments being filled out related to a candidate. Right. So maybe if you're hiring a programmer, you might have a quick assessment where it's, you know, aptitude for Python, JavaScript and PHP on a one through five. And based on those, you know, they get a four, maybe they get 10 points, they get a five, they get 15. You fill out these assessments and it, you know, calculates a score. And as you fill out multiple assessments, that score gets updated over and over again. 
But one of the challenges is, is, let's say I'm creating a record from a form or, you know, by manually entering it. And we have a bunch of parameters in the candidate record that we want to score on, right? And it's kind of a pain if I create that candidate and then have to manually fill out an assessment based on the data that I already have, you know, that's in that record as is. So, you know, what we did is we basically built out a form that captures a whole slew of information, right? Whether it's, you know, aptitude for certain softwares, you know, history of doing certain types of work, you know, willingness to travel, all these different types of parameters. And we integrated that form to route just directly into Zoho Recruit. So for each of those fields, it's on the form. We've just got a field right inside of the candidate page to capture it. And then what we do is the minute that that candidate is created with those values, we run a custom function, which basically looks at all those different parameters and based on the response assigns a score. And as, as this script is running, each different parameter is adding a certain amount of points to the score, right? So it starts at zero, then we're at five, now we're at 15, now we're at 16, because they didn't do too well on question three, right? Then the cool thing is with this is that even though in Zoho Recruit, the candidate score field is kind of built in to um, some pre-designed functionality, they still allow us to update it via deluge, which was nice. We were a little worried we we're going to bump into a restriction, you know, because sometimes when a certain field that Zoho adds is, you know, core to a predefined process, they don't let us update it normally with deluge or, with, you know, API calls. But we're able to just write it directly into the default candidate scoring field. And then so as future assessments are done, that score is updated. So I could start at 50. And after two assessments, I'm at, you know, 75 and then I get the job or I start at 50, but after an assessment or two, I don't do too hot. And now I'm at, you know, 25 and I don't get the job. So it's kind of just a quick and easy way to allow for an initial score to be created based on, you know, the initial information that you capture on a candidate so that any future assessments can be based on, you know, updates to that original score. It's a slick. Slick, it reminds me. So, years ago, my God, eight, nine, ten years ago, we did a really interesting thing using strictly Google, where when a candidate filled it out, as soon as they submitted an application, it sent them an email, and the email basically said, We need you to do this, this, and this. I think it was, you know, click here and tell us about yourself. And it was a Google form, mm -hmm. and they would fill out the Google form and they'd hit submit. And then we would parse basically the fields. And if they didn't answer things correctly, if certain words were missing, it would be, you know, how would you do this? It would score. And then it would send them another email of things they needed to do. Um, and then it was basically the whole thing, you know, and then it was going to be a Skype call and it would ask them for various things. And at the end, you could go to your spreadsheet and just sort your spreadsheet by the point total. And it would give you all of your appointments for the week with your top candidates. And the other people were just basically out. They never even got set up the Skype call if they didn't make it mm -hmm. to a certain thing. You could do that with this. You basically, this is a much more elegant methodology of scoring, scoring, scoring based upon the forms that are being filled in. Um, and just, you know, when you're ready to do your interviews for the week, just kind of go and look at the candidates that have scored the highest. Is that, I imagine that was the use case for this anyway, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and this use case specifically, you know, is, um, is kind of targeted where they're going to want to do a manual review before they invite anyone to an interview for right now. There's some like geographic specificity around hiring for them, but um, you could surely do that, right? I could say if this initial score is above 50, then we'll send them the email to book an appointment for an interview. And if it's below 50, we'll assign a task to someone to review it and see if we want to, to book an interview. So you could, you could surely layer on that functionality to this, um, you know, as it's all built in deluge, right? So there's not a lot that we can't do once you have the core structure down. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty slick. All right. And that brings us to our read of the week. A couple of things I got to say on this. I haven't even talked to you about this. This is going to crack you up. So this is 11 creative email design trends to watch in 2021. It's from HubSpot. It is a uh, infographic, basically. And it talks about, hey, if you're going to send emails out, here are the things you need to look for in 2021. And as you know, we have tried graphical emails over and over and over again. Um, and uh, 
they don't really work. I mean, I'm just a Tex fan, but here's, <laughs> I'm going to call some serious BS on, uh, on HubSpot right now. Cause for those of you that are watching, I'm going to slide the little viewfinder up. You'll notice it's email design trends, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> So they're kind of, they're repurposing an article from four years ago and they hoped, uh, I guess we wouldn't notice. The, the funny thing was, is I forgot to put the link in on this. And so I went and I looked at, this is written by Carolyn Forsey and it's actually a good infographic, but I went to, I clicked on her and I'm looking at all her articles and it's not on the first page and it's not on the second page. It's not on the third <laughs> page and it's not on the fourth page. And so I actually had to do a search for it. So uh, I don't know if this is too cool HubSpot because I have to think that if you're doing creative email design, maybe things have changed in the last four years. Um, <laughs> but uh, all they did was they just changed the, uh, it looks like they just changed the date. I don't know. I, no way of looking. We should at start it. doing that. We could just repurpose our 2019 year in review. I know you're working on our 2020 year in review. Maybe we just do the same one that we did, uh, that we did last year. <laughs> Nothing's changed. I know. Anyway, um, this is kind of, you know, when I originally got this, I really wanted to talk about, I mean, I just don't know if this stuff works. I mean, I think, yeah, I think the problem is with any of these that are image heavy, you just don't know that someone who's going to read this email, those images are going to load. I mean, a lot of times for me, I know specifically we use Gmail and Gmail is kind of a stickler about this, but almost no images just load in an email, unless I click load images, right? It gives you that little drop down at the top. And so, I mean, for us, obviously we market to a specific group of people. So, you know, buyer beware, but for us, we just find a lot more success with more plain text emails. And I guess we don't do a lot of cold outbound where you might need to be more eye catching, right? To try to like get someone's attention. Generally, anyone that we're mailing right. is pretty well opted in and, you know, we don't really, we don't buy any lists, right? Where we need to make a huge first impression with a design template, but I don't know. It's just a little bit interesting to, to see it because in our use cases, we only saw things get worse when we added more design to what we do. It, you know, funny thing is when we completely did, we redesigned the weekly newsletter and we made it graphical and I was expecting to get emails going, Oh, I love the new look and feel. I can get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I got about eight or nine that were like, oh God. <laughs> yeah. And notice, didn't we notice a decline in opens too and clicks? Mm -hmm. Which uh, I think is partially because when you have a lot of design elements in an email, like you're a big user of this, and I, I bet some of our listeners are listeners are too, but you know, in applications like Gmail and Outlook, they'll automatically, if you turn it on, create multiple inboxes for you. You know, where it'll basically have one for real emails. It'll have, <laughs> it'll have one for, um, you know, newsletters, right? Or one for marketing emails and things like that. And one of the ways that Google or Outlook is going to determine what's a marketing email is the type of content in it. And a bunch of images are going to get you out of that primary inbox and into, you know, a newsletter list that you don't want to be in. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway take a look at it, give it a read. I, I did, they'd actually, we, uh, Asa who's listening to the show live here pointed out that at the very bottom, it does say <laughs> this was originally published March 13th, 2017. And then they updated it two days ago. All right. I'm still not sure I'm happy about that HubSpot. All right, let's move on to what's new on Zanata. Uh, a little light this week. It's, uh, you know, considering it's, two days left in the year. Um, but we did manage to find, um, you know, we got a new blog out, which is uh, tracking and reimbursing expenses with Zoho Books. We've got some titling issues going on here. Not sure what's happening there. Anyway, uh, and just basically how to get your using Zoho Expense and Zoho Books and the entire workflow. Uh, several clients that use this. It's, it's just nice. I mean, if you can if you've got employees that are submitting expenses, um, Zoho expense is getting to the point, you know, there was a time a few years ago, I remember I was talking to somebody and they were using concur and, you know, they said, I want, should we use Zoho expense? And we kind of did a side-by-side -side comparison of Zoho expense and concur. If you're unfamiliar, concur is an expense program and man, it wasn't even close, but now it's pretty close. Uh, they've made just leaps and bound changes, especially the big deal is that 
for expense, mobile is used. People use the mobile app for their expenses. Mm -hmm. They're taking a snapshot of their receipts. They're putting them in. They're pulling it all through. Um, so this was, I, I think, this is, so we got an article here on basically how to do that. And then um, Wayne managed to find one more resource guide. Resource guide <laughs> and this is how to import leads into Marketing Hub. So a nice little 13 page guide on how to get your leads in CSV files kind of steps you through it. This is our, actually, I kind of looked at this, this guide could apply to anything. I know it's specific to marketing hub, but it talks about cleaning things up, your CSV file, what you want to do, importing things. So, uh, pretty nice worth, uh, worth taking a look at, I think. All righty. And that brings us to the application of the week. So last week, if you remember, I went into the marketplace and I looked at all the CRM marketplace apps and I said, what's the highest rated application? And with, you know, 580 uh, something five-star votes, it was SMS magic. And uh, so I did the same thing this year and or this week only I did it was a desk and it's now uh, Twilio SMS MMS for Zoho Desk. Uh, it only had 25 star votes, but Desk is relatively new, so it's rolling out. But it was interesting to look at, the, and there aren't a lot of Desk apps, but I found it fascinating that the two top rated apps, the apps that people are actually commenting on and doing things on, are all apps related around SMS and MMS. It's a big thing that we do get asked for quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those just direct ways to, you know, make sure that a message that you're sending gets seen. And I think, you know, one of the nice things about this is, um, you know, it's also bringing in texts as tickets, right, which is kind of a huge piece, right? I mean, you could always have a texting service and be able to get back to people. But one of the one of the sweet things about this, if you're look, watching us on uh, YouTube, as you can see, basically you have a ticket come in that says it's an SMS from, you know, this specific phone number. And you're able to just respond, right? Send via Twilio SMS directly back to them, right? Just from from within Desk. So you're you're using the exact same UI that you would use to respond to an email ticket, but you're just responding to an SMS um, SMS text, which is super slick. I'd be interested to see it. I don't see it in any of these if it's if it's matching against contacts as well, right? If you had this phone number in the system, is it able to? Is able to match. Up. I don't see it specifically. It looks, it looks like, like it might be doing it. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it is. It kind of grades someone out here. I think they did. Yeah, it, it looks that would be the case. So nice. it looks like they've done a match, which is pretty cool. I also want to give a kind of a shout out to this developer. Um, they're called O Apps. I think it stands for Awesome Apps or something like that. Or um, And they are basically just writing. It looks like they're writing stuff for extensions for the marketplace. So they've written a Vimeo, a Zoom, a Rike and Sightly, the Twilio SMS, a Sugar CRM, a Monday integration. Um, kind of uh, kind of interesting. It looks like they're based over in India and all they're doing is uh, just creating marketplace applications. It's oapps.xyz.com. Uh, so shout out to these guys. Some, some good stuff. You know, we thought we might see companies that just focused on building out these extensions uh, back at the developers conference when they wrote, rolled out Catalyst and everything. Um, it appears that this company has taken that to heart. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, we just see more and more of them every week now, now that it's so much easier, faster and easier to deploy them and get them uh, deployed right into the marketplace. Yeah. All righty. And that brings us to our tip of the week. We did not have time to do one ourselves, but I did find a, uh, a pretty nice one over in um, just, just published over in the community. And it's uh, kind of what we were talking about, which is, hey, create, edit, and animate, animate your slides in offline mode using the... Uh, show Android app. Uh, this is, offline mode is pretty cool. They've been rolling this out to a lot of their applications lately, um, both desktop and mobile, meaning, you know, if, if you're, you want to write an email, you want to write a document, you want to do anything, you're on your laptop, you're on whatever, you don't need to be online. You basically can go into Zoho Writer, use it in offline mode, do whatever you want. They brought that to Android a while ago. And uh, now it's just kind of a nice thing on, hey, here's how to go ahead and create and edit and do the entire thing in offline mode. 
if you've got – my fingers are just way too big for this to happen. I don't think <laughs> – <laughs> I don't think I can make it work. Yeah, I think I'd need an iPad at the very least. For sure. All righty. Well, Tyler, that is going to uh, wrap up a, another show. We want to thank everybody for listening. And if you have any questions or comments, you can just head over to Zenata.com or CRMZen.com and find the uh, drop us a line link. And on the website is where you'll find complete episodes as well as show notes with links to the stories we discussed today. As always, you can follow us on your favorite social media platforms and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app as well as on YouTube. We'll see you next Monday and next year.